address resolution protocol. This is the protocol that's used to, to resolve the MAC address for the given IP address. So what is the need or why do we need ARP? So uh, in order to communicate within the local network, we don't need an IP address because IP address is not used to communicate within the network. So instead a special address that's known as a physical address or a MAC address is used to communicate within the local network. So in order to get the MAC address of the destination with an IP known IP address, this ARP protocol is used. So here one more thing that's ARP catch table. This table will be maintained in the devices which maintain the correlations of IP and the MAC addresses. Now let's see in the real time how the ARP is used within the network. In this scenario we are having five, five PCs that's PC1, sorry PC0, PC1, 2, 3, 4 that's directly connected with the switch. This is a 10, 10, 10 dot 0 slash 24 network. I have statically assigned an IP as 10, 10, 10 dot 1 for 0 and 10, 10, 10 dot 2 for this and 10, 10, 10 dot 3 for PC2 and dot 4 for him and dot 5 for him. So let's see how ARP works. There are two main things. That is, if first a PC want to communicate with another, first the first thing is it will check in its local ARP catch table. In this local ARP catch table, if the destination MAC address is already available, instead of sending an ARP packet, it will directly send the ICMP packet if you're pinging. So if you if the destination MAC address is not available in the device ARP cache table then it will generate an ARP request and the ARP request will be broadcasted from the switch to all the directly connected devices by that the destination MAC address will be known to the source device and then once this uh, destination MAC address is learnt then by using the destination MAC address then the ICMP packet will be sent so let, let's see how ARP works now uh, in this scenario we are going to ping from PC1 to PC4. So before that, uh, we'll see the ARP cache table of PC1. So now PC1 have not learned anything or anything in the sense uh, ha have not learned any of the device's physical address. So in this case, if you are trying to ping PC4 uh, from PC1, it will generate an ARP request. Now I'm going to ping 10, 10, 10 dot 5. That's nothing but PC4. So see, instead of generating an ICMP packet, an ARP packet is generated. This ARP packet consists of source IP address and source MAC address. The MAC address of PC1 is this and IP address of the source is 10, 10, 10 dot 2. And the destination IP address is 10, 10, 10 dot 5 which is nothing but PC4 and as it's not aware of the destination MAC address it puts all F that's nothing it's broadcasting the packet so let's see what's happening it sends the ARP request to the switch and the switch will once the switch got the ARP request then it will broadcast to all the directly connected devices asking who is that device for example this is how we know this 10 10 10 dot 2 no it wants to communicate with 10 10 10 dot 5 so it sends a message that hi I am 10 10 10 dot 2 and I want to know who is 10 10 10 dot 5 so once the switch got this message it will ask who is 10 10 10 dot 5 so this message will be sent to ask who is 10 10 10 dot 5 so this will tell no I am not 10 10 dot 10 dot 5 he will tell no I am not he will tell no I am not then it will tell yes I am 10 10 10 dot 5 and when it's sending a reply for the ARP, it will fetch its, it will uh, send his physical address with this reply. Now this ARP reply will be sent to the source. Now this PC1 have learned the physical address of this device. Now PC1 know the physical address of this device. By this now the ICMP packets will be sent henceforth. So the first ICMP packet is now sending. Now it won't broadcast. It will directly forward it to the PC4. This 
this is an ICMP packet. This is the replay, rep replay for the first ICMP that was sent from the source. Now let's see. See, this is the first replay for that ping. And this is how it gets pinged. Now the sep second replay was got. Now it's sending for third. Third replay was sent. And fourth ICMP request is sending. And again, the fourth replay was caught. Now, see, now the fourth ICMP replay was done. This is how ARP works. Now let's check the local device or catch table. So now the device one, that sorry, the PC one have learned the MAC address of PC five, which has the IP address of ten 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 dot five. Initially, bef before we are starting the process this source was not aware about the MAC address of the destination it only knows the destination IP address so by generating an ARP request and flooded in the network it got the replay from the destinations about its MAC address so once it learned the MAC address of the destination then it transferred the packet directly towards the thing if now again if you are pinging from the same source to the same destination instead of sending an ARP again as it's aware about the destination MAC address already in its cache then in this case the ICMP packet will be directly sent to the destination let's see ICMP packet is created it's forwarded to the switch then it got a replay so this is how ARP works that is the first time it will uh, if if the destination MAC address is not available in its own ARP cache table then it will send for an ARP request and if it's learned the uh, MAC address of the destination through ARP then the next time it will send directly the ICMP packet so now as like the same now I am going to uh, reach PC three from PC one. So now let's see what happened. As PC one is not aware about the PC three's MAC address, first it will generate an ARP message, then ARP message is sent to the switch and the ARP is broadcasted and the destination will send its MAC that I am the person you're searching for. So once once it learned the MAC address of the PC three, now it will directly send the ICMP packet to the destination. the ping has been completed now let's check the ARP entry of the device one now PC one have learned the Mac two devices MAC address of the two devices nothing but PC four and PC three as like these devices switches also store the MAC address of the devices so this is the command that's used to, to show the MAC address that that was learned that's a ARP cache table this is the command to see see the switch has learned all the five devices MAC address now let me clear this so this is the MAC address of the all the directly connected devices this is how the devices learned the physical address of the neighbors or destinations and communication is happening within the local network so thank you very much for watching this video and the next in the next part we'll discuss how ARP works with different networks how ARP works when the uh, between different networks thank you